Rome's architecture over the centuries has greatly developed, especially from the classical and imperial Roman styles to modern fascist architecture. Rome was for a period one of the world's main epicenters of classical architecture, developing new forms such as the arch, the dome and the vault. The Romanesque style in the 11th, 12th, and 13th centuries was also widely used in Roman architecture, and later the city became one of the main centers of Renaissance, Baroque and neoclassical architecture. One of the symbols of Rome is the Colosseum, the largest amphitheater ever built in the Roman Empire. Among others, a masterpiece of Renaissance architecture in Rome is the Piazza del Campidoglio by Michelangelo. During this period, the great aristocratic families of Rome used to build opulent dwellings as the Palazzo del Quirinale, the Palazzo Venezia, the Palazzo Farnese, the Palazzo Barberini, the Palazzo Chigi, the Palazzo Spada the Palazzo della Cancelleria, and the Villa Farnesina. Many of the famous city squares, some huge, majestic and often adorned with obelisks, some small and picturesque, took their present shape during the Renaissance and Baroque periods. The principal ones are Piazza Navona, the Spanish Steps, Campo de Fiori, Piazza Venezia, Piazza Farnese, Piazza della Rotonda and Piazza della Minerva. Other notable 17th-century Baroque palaces are the Palazzo Madama, now the seat of the Italian Senate, and the Palazzo Montesatorio, now the seat of the Chamber of Deputies of Italy. In 1870, Rome became the capital city of the new Kingdom of Italy. During this time, neoclassicism, a building style influenced by the architecture of antiquity, became a predominant influence in Roman architecture. The main activities during his government were the isolation of the Capitoline Hill, Via dei Monti, later renamed Via dell'Impero and finally Via dei Fori Imperiali, Via del Mare, later renamed Via del Teatro di Marcello, the isolation of the Mausoleum of Augustus, with the erection of Piazza Augusto Imperatore, Via della Conciliazione. Architecturally, fascism favored the most modern movements, such as rationalism. Parallel to this, in the 1920s another style emerged, named Style Novecento, characterized by its links with ancient Roman architecture. The most representative buildings of Europe are the Palazzo della Civiltà Italiana, the iconic design of which has been labeled the Cubic of Square Colosseum, and the Palazzo dei Congressi, example of rationalist style. Also, the Palazzo della Farnesina, the current seat of the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, was designed in 1935 in pure fascist style. Public parks and nature reserves cover a large area in Rome and the city has one of the largest areas of green space among European capitals. The most notable part of this green space is represented by the large number of villas and landscaped gardens created by the Italian aristocracy. While most of the parks surrounding the villas were destroyed during the building boom of the late 19th century, some of them remain. The most notable of these are Villa Borghese, Villa Ada, and Villa Doria Pamphili. Villa Doria Pamphili is west of the Giannicolo Hill comprising some 1.8 square kilometers. Also on the Giannicolo Hill there is Villa Shara, with playgrounds for children and shaded walking areas. In the nearby area of Trastevere the Ordo Botanico is a cool and shady green space. The Old Roman Hippodrome is another large green space, it has few trees, but is overlooked by the Palatine and the Rose Garden. Nearby is the lush Villa Salimontana, close to the garden surrounding the Baths of Caracalla. The Villa Borghese Garden is the best-known large green space in Rome, with famous art galleries among its shaded walks. Overlooking Piazza del Popolo and the Spanish Steps are the gardens of Pincho and Villa Medici. Noteworthy is also the pine wood of Castelfusano, near Ostia. Rome also has a number of regional parks of much more recent origin including the Pinedo Regional Park and the Appian Way Regional Park. There are also nature reserves at Marsiliana and at Tenuta di Castel Porziano. Rome is a city famous for its numerous fountains, built in all different styles, from classical and medieval, to Baroque and neoclassical. The city has had fountains for more than 2,000 years, and they have provided drinking water and decorated the piazzas of Rome. During the Roman Empire, in 98 AD, according to Sextus Julius Frontinus, the Roman consul who was named Curator Aquarum or Guardian of the Water of the City, Rome had nine aqueducts which fed 39 monumental fountains and 591 public basins, not counting the water supplied to the imperial household, baths, and owners of private villas. Each of the major fountains was connected to two different aqueducts, in case one was shut down for service. During the 17th and 18th century, 
the Roman popes reconstructed other ruined Roman aqueducts and built new display fountains to mark their termini, launching the golden age of the Roman fountain. The fountains of Rome, like the paintings of Rubens, were expressions of the new style of Baroque art. They were crowded with allegorical figures, and filled with emotion and movement. In these fountains, sculpture became the principal element, and the water was used simply to animate and decorate the sculptures. They, like Baroque gardens, were a visual representation of confidence and power. Rome is well known for its statues but, in particular, the talking statues of Rome. These are usually ancient statues which have become popular soapboxes for political and social discussion, and places for people to voice their opinions. There are two main talking statues, the Pasquino and the Marforio, yet there are four other noted ones, Il Babuino, Madama Lucrezia, Il Facchino and Abbot Luigi. Most of these statues are ancient Roman or classical, and most of them also depict mythical gods, ancient people or legendary figures, Il Pasquino represents Menelaus, Abbot Luigi is an unknown Roman magistrate, Il Babuino is supposed to be Silenus, Marforio represents Oceanus, Madama Lucrezia is a bust of Isis, and Il Facchino is the only non-Roman statue, created in 1580, and not representing anyone in particular. They are often, due to their status, covered with placards or graffiti expressing political ideas and points of view. Other statues in the city, which are not related to the talking statues, include those of the Ponte Sant'Angelo, or several monuments scattered across the city, such as that to Giordano Bruno in the Campo de Fieri. The city hosts eight ancient Egyptian and five ancient Roman obelisks, together with a number of more modern obelisks, there was also formerly an ancient Ethiopian obelisk in Rome. The city contains some of obelisks and piazzas, such as in Piazza Navona, St. Peter's Square, Piazza Montesatorio, and Piazza del Popolo, and others in villas, thermi parks and gardens, such as in Villa Salimontana, the Baths of Diocletian, and the Pynchon Hill. Moreover, the center of Rome hosts also Trajan's and Antonine Column, two ancient Roman columns with spiral relief. The Column of Marcus Aurelius is located in Piazza Colonna and it was built around 180 AD by Commodus in memory of his parents. The Column of Marcus Aurelius was inspired by Trajan's Column at Trajan's Forum, which is part of the Imperial Fora. The city of Rome contains numerous famous bridges which cross the Tiber. The only bridge to remain unaltered until today from the Classical Age is Ponte dei Quattro Capi, which connects the Isola Tiberina with the left bank. The other surviving, albeit modified, ancient Roman bridges crossing the Tiber are Ponte Sestio, Ponte Sant'Angelo and Ponte Milvio. Considering Ponte Nomentano, also built during ancient Rome, which crosses the Anion, currently there are five ancient Roman bridges still remaining in the city. Other noteworthy bridges are Ponte Sisto, the first bridge built in the Renaissance above Roman foundations, Ponte Roto, actually the only remaining arch of the ancient Pons Aemilius, collapsed during the flood of 1598 and demolished at the end of the 19th century, and Ponte Vittorio Emanuele II, a modern bridge connecting Corso Vittorio Emanuele and Borgo. Most of the city's public bridges were built in classical or Renaissance style, but also in Baroque, neoclassical and modern styles. According to the Encyclopaedia Britannica, the finest ancient bridge remaining in Rome is the Ponte Sant'Angelo, which was completed in 135 AD, and was decorated with ten statues of the angels, designed by Bernini in 1688. Rome has extensive amount of ancient catacombs, or underground burial places under or near the city, of which there are at least 40, some discovered only in recent decades. Though most famous for Christian burials, they include pagan and Jewish burials, either in separate catacombs or mixed together. The first large-scale catacombs were excavated from the 2nd century onwards. Originally they were carved through tuff, a soft volcanic rock, outside the boundaries of the city, because Roman law forbade burial places within city limits. Currently, maintenance of the catacombs is in the hands of the papacy which has invested in the Silesians of Don Bosco the supervision of the catacombs of St. Calixtus on the outskirts of Rome.